firstly, welcome to this webinar uh, from the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network. My name is Nick Hakes and I'm the uh, chair of the Pro Bono Network and with me we have Tim Ross, who's the Senior Financial Advisor from Henderson Ross up in sunny Queensland, I believe, uh, at the moment, Tim. Indeed. Great to be with you, Nick. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I'm in on Sydney. We have Tim up in Queensland and thank you to all of our participants who are joining us on this webinar. And thank you to MS Queensland for the partnership with the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network and for um, enabling this to happen. So our deep thanks to uh, all of the people of, with MS Queensland who are joining us. The purpose of this is to give you a understanding of what the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network is, uh, how it works, and just to uh, give you the confidence that here is a service that is available to you now. Uh, the information is on the MS Queensland website, uh, but like all things, reading something from the internet uh, gives you a little bit of understanding. Uh, my experience is that it's always better to put some context and some colour around it and uh, over the next half an hour, um, that's what we aim to do. Talking about the internet, I, if you are anything like me, I am sure that at some point in your life, you have reached to your phone or um, the internet, be on your computer, and you've typed in something like insurance calculator, or how much do I need in retirement, or something like, how does superannuation work? And, uh, and I think we've all done that at some point of our lives. And uh, if you're also anything like me, what you get back is literally millions and millions of hits. And it's been described that sometimes going to uh, the internet for information is a little bit like uh, drinking from a fire hydrant. And there is a huge amount of um, uh, information, but that information doesn't necessarily translate to knowledge. And what it certainly doesn't translate to is that knowledge doesn't translate into action. And if we think about, well, how do we make really good financial decisions and, and how do we stop ourselves from making potentially decisions that aren't in our own best interest, then we need to take that information, we need to turn it into knowledge, and importantly, we then need to act. And, uh, and some of the common reactions that I get in, in my travels when we start to think about uh, what to do with all the sheer amount of information that's out there, it makes you feel like this. Uh, it can be overwhelming. Financial services uh, is the largest sector of the Australian economy. We collectively have $2.5 trillion invested in the superannuation system. We all have it. Uh, it is a mandatory part of our working life, our deferred savings for retirement. Yet what we can't mandate is people's level of engagement with the superannuation system and all the complexities that come from that. Uh, and some of the feedback that I've also uh, quite commonly heard is that when people try to make sense of the complexities of not only the superannuation system, uh, it could be things like budgeting and saving, uh, mortgages, insurances, well then, uh, Thinking about it says, gee, it's a little bit like a doctor's visit and a maths class and marriage counselling all at the same time. Uh, and, and people's first reaction can often be, this is not something that I enjoy. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. And what we want to demonstrate today is that uh, sitting down with a financial advisor, and we're going to ask Tim to, uh, to give an insight into how that experience works, especially if they are a pro bono financial advisor willing to provide their services and expertise on a pro bono basis, it can actually strip away this overwhelming feeling 
Uh, and, and a lot of the apprehension and nervousness that comes when people start to considering their financial decision making. The Pro Bono Financial Advice Network has been uh, running for a number of years now and, and simply it is a collaboration across the financial services sector. So there are uh, people and companies involved at a senior level that represent some of the most well-known brand names uh, that you see uh, on billboards and, and companies. So insurance, uh, superannuation funds, wealth management institutions. Uh, they um, want to bring their expertise uh, to, to people who are facing a significant personal crisis, uh, usually to do with a health crisis, uh, which is why we're delighted to work with MS Queensland. Uh, so we have the, um, the large institutions who are part of this network, and then we also have financial advisors, which typically uh, run their own practice. They employ on average four or five people, usually one or two expert financial advisors, and uh, Tim is one of those people, and we'll get him to talk a little bit more about uh, his particular business. Uh, and, and that is representative of the people who are involved in this network. And I guess the, the simple cause is to demonstrate that the financial advice profession has a commitment to the greater good of society. And we feel that we can lend our expertise to have a positive impact uh, on the lives of people uh, who are facing a significant crisis in their life. And if we can help make sense of the financial complexities, uh, then we envision that uh, you can spend more time dealing on things which truly matter in, in your life. I'd like to just um, give a little bit of context from somebody who was well known in the MS uh, community. Uh, his name is Simon McKeon. He's a great ambassador for MS. He was a founder of MS Research, uh, but he also knows the financial services and financial advice world very well. He was a former chairman of AMP. Uh, and now he's the Chancellor of Monash University. Uh, he's an Australian of the Year, uh, and he understands on a personal basis firsthand um, the impact of, of living with MS as, uh, as he is one of those people. So here's just a, a quick comment from Simon McKean. advisor when confronted with someone who suddenly has a, a life-changing event, uh, particularly say being told that they have MS, is that they're one of a, a small group that that person really needs. All of a sudden their life is potentially profoundly different. And in the case of their financial affairs, that might need a new plan, a visiting of a of a situation that has been under control, no longer under control. And, um, uh, you know, along with other people that are in the lives of that person afflicted with MS, the financial advisor has a very, very important role to play. Just a, a simple message there from, from Simon and to give us a deeper understanding of the role that a financial advisor can play. I'll introduce Tim Ross into the conversation. Uh, Tim Ross is, uh, um, owns his own financial advice practice up in Queensland and Brisbane uh, called Henderson Ross. He is a director of the Association of Financial Advisors. He is on the board of the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network. Uh, and in his, um, in his day job, he actually spends most of his time helping people uh, with their financial decision making. And so how this bit's gonna work is I'll ask uh, Tim just a, a series of questions just to lift the lid on what you should expect and some of the benefit and value of uh, dealing with a pro bono financial advisor. Uh, and if you have a question which you would like to ask, uh, there's just a section uh, there where you can put in a question. Uh, we're happy to you know, take any questions. So I'll 
lead off the batting. And if you do have something, uh, please ask. No question is is silly. Uh, you know, the purpose of here is to give you a deeper understanding. So if you have a question, just type it and we'll, we'll uh, endeavor to get to it. So Tim, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Nick. Great to be here. So why don't we start with uh, who Henderson Ross is? You, you know, just run a, a typical financial advice practice in Queensland. Can you give us a little bit more understanding of, of your practice? Sure. Um, well, our practice, uh, Henderson Ross and Co Financial Group, um, is based in East Brisbane, just near Bowen Gabba, uh, close to Brisbane CBD. And the practice consists of myself and my business partner, Doug Henderson. We're the partners in the business. And we have three staff, one of whom is also a financial advisor, but who is employed by us. Excellent. And Tim, I can hear a little bit of a strange accent there. A um, uh, little bit about you and, and how you get into financial advice. Sure. So... My family and I arrived in Australia from Scotland in 1986. Uh, so I was a teenager then. And uh, when I left school, my father was a technical training manager with a company called Prudential. And so he had then started his own financial planning practice. It was the early days of financial planning, mainly due to, as you mentioned before, the start of corporate super. That kind of really kicked things off because Australians suddenly actually had some savings to do something with. And it was the birth if you like of financial planning in many respects part of that it was mainly life insurance uh, but i started working with my dad when i left school uh, he still comes in to mentor us within the business from time to time uh, so that's great to have his involvement still he's in his mid 70s and we appreciate his experience um, but yeah so i'm a proud scott australian and i don't know if you can see the color but uh, proudly supporting queensland today as well mate right <laughs> well, um a game in melbourne i believe Correct. Yes. <laughs> um, so a common question that I get, Tim, is, is people have a bit of super, they may have insurances, they could potentially own their home, home or saving for it. And I think people don't really understand what to expect when they go and see a financial advisor. Uh, so if they came into your office, what should people expect? Uh, well, hopefully a warm welcome to start with, and uh, we love meeting new people. Uh, we really love looking at the opportunities that people have that sometimes they're unaware of to improve their financial situation and position. So as you said, uh, every person's individual, their own goals and objectives are gonna be quite individual to them as well. So you can even get people who've got kind of similar circumstances, but who've got quite different goals and objectives. So there's certainly not a, a one size fits all. Um, so what, a person should expect is that a good quality financial advisor will really be interested in what's important to you and how they can help um, you achieve those goals because usually there's a there's a reason why you're coming to see an advisor to start with there might be a, a question or an issue that's on your mind so you should expect that they'll be interested in answering that and then due to their experience the other thing that a financial planner brings into the discussion is a much broader peripheral vision of financial matters. And so quite often you'll find a person comes in with a particular idea of what they want information on. And quite often by the time they leave the office, yes, that idea will have been addressed, but there'll be a range of other things as well that will be brought into focus to show their relevance in the discussion. So you'd expect a broad discussion over a range of financial matters that should address the things that are important to you and bring to your attention some things that you may not have thought about as well. Tim, sometimes, yeah, we don't talk about money very well in our personal relationships or family relationships. Uh, and, and so, you know, should people um, feel nervous or apprehensive about coming in and sharing their financial situation with you or another advisor? I am... Look, good question. I'd say with reference to the history of people's discussions on money, um, any of us involved in families where we've had discussions about money tend to know how those discussions can go because emotions tend to run high because everyone's got an interest in the discussion and 
and that tends to be a, a thing that can cause a bit of angst between people who otherwise love each other. Uh, when you come to see a financial planner, the difference is that he's not emotionally involved other than trying to help you navigate your way through the questions that you've got. So I'd say in actual fact, it's a safe environment. We're used to having deep and complex discussions with people or things that they would find quite confronting. Um, but trying to do it in a simple, easy to understand way that will help to navigate some steps towards seeking uh, a resolution or a decision on different things. So I'd say I could understand a degree of nervousness because most people are not comfortable talking about money. Um, but we would hopefully dispel that pretty quickly, help people to feel comfortable. And I think one of your illustrations showed earlier, the financial planner tends to be the person that gets to know more about the person than probably any other professional they'll deal with. Because we do deal with a, a range of the emotional, as well as the things that are physically affecting people and, and their uh, decision making and the things that may be worrying them. We're really there to try and help provide both counselling, but then also advice in terms of what they can do to make their situation better. It's a great point. It's natural to feel a little bit apprehensive when you are, you know, bearing your, your financial situation. And there are some other uh, challenges in life, which, you know, may be um, uh, having an impact on people. And if you haven't sat down with an advisor before, and it is your first time, it's natural to feel a little bit apprehensive but the, you as the advisor have, have actually done that many times before. And so, uh, you know, you've guided people through those initial feelings. And, you know, usually there's some really strong relationships get formed over a period of time. So do people need to be prepared, Tim? Should they bring anything in? Um, they don't need to. It's, it's not mandatory. Normally before we have uh, a first meeting with the client, we'll send a little checklist of things to try and bring along if, if you can. Um, top of the list is what's important to you. Um, what benefit do you think coming to seek financial advice could bring into your life? So what are the key considerations that are on your mind? But then obviously because it does involve people's financial situations, um, bringing in details around, for example, their superannuation funds, uh, bringing in details about any insurance benefits they may have, also some details of assets and liabilities, as well as perhaps uh, estate planning considerations that, that they may have. So if they've already made a will, what does that look like? If they've got other entities apart from just their family, so they may still be running businesses and that type of thing. Um, what does that look like, etc. So yeah, we're going to obviously get into a little bit of the nitty gritty and the granular detail of a person's financial life so we can provide appropriate advice. So the more people can bring that helps us to have a clear picture, the better, but it's not mandatory. Most people have got a fairly good idea of where they're at anyway, uh, but obviously the detail is required. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't need to have everything in all, in a, all ducks in a row at the very start, but they can... Not really something like their superannuation account. Um, Correct. So, so what are you going to do with it? So people bring in their super um, statement and, and what do you, what's your interest? What do you, what? Um, so, so sometimes the first thing we do is open the envelope because <laughs> oh. it's amazing the number of people that you say, can you bring in some statements and they'll bring in completely untouched. It's coming and it's still the way it appeared when it came in the mailbox say uh, six months ago. So, Sometimes we're waiting for someone to help them, right? Correct. Yeah. So most people open it and it's like pages and pages of stuff and they're like, what does this all mean? And it just gets shoved into the too hard basket pretty quickly. So we'll actually help our clients through also educating them about what the statement says to them to explain some of these details. Cause quite often people have actually got no idea. They've been receiving these statements for years, but other than the bottom line number, maybe the current balance, or if there's a big number telling them what the performance was in the last year, that's often the only real things that they, they look at. Um, but we'll look at a range of other things, including insurance benefits, the asset allocation, to see that it's in harmony with their risk profile and, and that type of thing. And there might be new terms for people that they haven't heard before, but that's basically just about trying to make sure the investments in the fund match what the person's goals and objectives are. And then also to identify for them any insurance benefits that may be payable I'm um, should an insurable event occur. 
you know, I think that's a great point. You mentioned the word education. I have seen so many great examples of the value of the relationship actually just making sense of a whole lot of words, statements, complexities, which uh, unless you are in an environment where someone can just sit down and answer some questions and use ordinary everyday language, uh, people have a you know, better understanding and, and leads to some further confidence or empowerment. So I think education is, is a great part of it. Um, yes. So initial meeting, is it just a one-off and then people go on their merry way or does it continue past that first meeting? It depends on the client. It depends on the needs that become identified at that time. So sometimes there can be something fairly sim simple that the client wishes to have addressed and we can do that. But quite often, probably more often than not, in the vast majority of cases, the relationship ends up being one that continues, evolves and develops over time. Okay. We've got some of our clients that have been with us for over 20 years. Oh, wow. I'm sure that uh, you know lots about them and they in turn, you know, obviously have great relationships with you if it's lasted for 20, 20 years. Yep. Just a reminder to everybody on the line that if you do have a question, feel free to type it in. Uh, happy to you know, be guided by you as to anything that you feel we need to, to cover. So, uh, Tim, a question that I'm asked when we start to present this service, which is available to people through the MS network, uh, is, is it free? Is it really free? What's the catch? Um, <laughs> My question to you on behalf of everyone here is, is it free? Well, almost unbelievably for a Scotsman, I've, it pains me to say now, I'm pleased to say, yes, it is free, uh, the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network. Uh, it's without charge, so people can feel confident that if they're coming through the avenue of the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network, um, that that experience that they have of meeting an advisor having a deep dive into their circumstances and getting some written advice, that will be free. Does it matter if you don't have lots of superannuation or, um, or money outside of super? Do you need to be you know, wealthy to need financial advice? Um, no, I, I don't believe so. Um, you know, we, we believe that Australians need great financial advice everyone's circumstances involve money to some extent. It's necessary for us to fund our lifestyles, whatever that might look like. And for our goals and objectives into the future, even understanding, for example, um, pension entitlements and, and things of that nature, um, people still need pointed in the right direction and some assistance. So certainly I'd say the more people have got, the more complex sometimes the need for advice can become. But going back to what you said before, which is that most people's actual knowledge of money and how it works and how, you know, how it's going to impact them is generally, I would say it's, it, it could do, you know, it could do with some work. People could, could definitely benefit from it, from some education. I think everyone, regardless of their circumstances, will benefit from financial advice to feel more in control of what they're doing with their money and, and how it's going to open up opportunities for them going forward. And, and uh, yeah, as, as Simon uh, made the point in his video, is sometimes just knowing that there is someone there as part of your support network who can help answer questions and just be a sounding board of ideas uh, can create confidence mm -hmm. and, uh, and reduce stress to be able to deal with some other challenges that people may have in their lives. Absolutely. And that comes back to that peripheral vision that we spoke about before. So just being able to speak to someone who has a good working knowledge of money and opportunities and also usually a, a network of other contacts and so on as well, even if it's an area that they're not, they haven't got particular expertise in, I am, they might be able to refer you on to an accountant or a lawyer or a finance broker or someone else that they may know within their network that can help with a, a query that, that a client may have. Uh, Tim, a question that's got to do with, uh, um, you know, who, who keeps their eye on you? Uh, so, 
um, you know, we've spoken about confidence. So give people an insight into, you know, you have your practice with advisors, but do you have um, people who are providing either support or oversight to, to you and your business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd say for a start with the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network, the group of people that are associated with the network are uh, some of the most astute and well-known credentialed financial planning identities in Australia from some of the leading companies. So they're very keen to know who's putting their hand up to be involved in this Pro Bono Financial Advice Network to start with. So that's a, that's a good start. But also every single financial advisor that operates in Australia is licensed through an Australian financial services license holder. That license holder is then answerable to ASIC. Regular audits are carried out on the authorised representatives of those license holders and I'm one of those uh, authorised representatives. And they like to make sure that the advice that we're giving is appropriate and it's always in the client's best interest. So I'd say members of the Australian community should be able to feel very confident that when seeking financial advice, whether it be through the Pro Bono Network or just more generally, uh, you should know that the financial advisors in Australia are very thoroughly monitored uh, and continue to be trained to make sure that the way that they're acting is ethically and always in the best interest of the clients that they serve. Yeah, um, we certainly operate in a highly regulated environment. You're absolutely right. Uh, and, you know, just, um, you know, another thing which I have uh, found a great learning experience is our relationships with um, MS Queensland have helped us with other parts of uh, learning, you know, lots about MS and about uh, living with MS. And, and uh, so that's been great to work in partnership with MS Queensland that have given us a different perspective and lens in which we are providing pro bono advice to, you know, to their community. So that's been really beneficial too. Yeah. Just on, on you, there's the, where we talked about pro bono and is it free, we'd, we'd have somebody ask a question. Great one here from Carolyn. Um, Tim, does the implementation of the financial advice, so you've put it in what's called a statement of advice, you provide, yes. now people need to go and do something with it. Does that attract a fee? No. I mean, there may, there may be fees charged by the product provider, but not by the advisor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, good question there. Um, what was your motivation to get involved with the Pro Bono Network? Really just a, a very worthy thing to be involved in. We're all about trying to benefit more people by giving them great advice. Most of those that are clients of ours obviously pay for that service, but we appreciate that there are people through circumstances that are beyond their control that are sudden, suddenly plunged into a new set of circumstances and they need a bit of a helping hand as the tree with the hands on it kind of identifies. So really trying to make sure that we're there to try and give back and to try and help people uh, by providing a valuable service. I've seen the difference that financial advice can make in people's lives, my own clients and and others that I've helped, I have helped other people like Pro Bono previously, not to do with the network, but just because I felt it was a friend of a friend and they had a need. And we have done that when they couldn't afford to pay for the advice. Um, I've seen the difference it can make, whether it be a stroke victim or someone who's going through uh, another you know, serious illness or something like that, or some other difficult circumstances. It can make a big difference, as you said before, to know that you've got a helping hand in that corner of your life where you feel quite vulnerable. And it can make a real difference. So I felt impelled through um, through uh, finding out about the network to get involved. And that is a sentiment which is shared by all of the participants within the Pro Bono Network. Uh, Tim, any first-hand uh, experience uh, of people with MS? Not a great deal, but I have been to visit the MS Queensland HQ, not too far away, just up in Dutton Park, so nice and handy for us, just around the corner, to be honest. I received a very warm welcome there from a very supportive team who are obviously doing all they can to support those with MS. They're a great bunch of people, so we certainly want to support them. And there was one colleague that I was and have been good friends with for quite some time. I'm, he's had MS for a 
quite a, a long period of, of time. Uh, but just seeing his wonderfully positive attitude, he's a really funny guy, a great guy to hang around. I really like him a lot. Um, and so, yeah, just having been exposed to how people deal with the challenge as well, and knowing that it, it obviously can have a, a long-term impact on people, to help people get on the right path so that they feel a bit more in control of their financial situation, well, I think that's a really great thing to do. And, uh, and you know, I'd like to thank you for lending your experience and expertise uh, and, you know, have really helped uh, um, provide that assistance to, to people. So, you know, from, so thank you for, for, for being involved. Pleasure. Uh, any last questions, just uh, to put the, the last um, shout out there. Uh, in closing, uh, our purpose was just to lift the lid on the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network, a service which is available through MS Queensland uh, now. Uh, you can go to the MS Queensland uh, website and under services, there's a link there uh, that has um, uh, some more information as to uh, how to actually get uh, in front of a financial advisor. Uh, the custodian of the Pro Bono Financial Advice Network is the Association of Financial Advisors. Uh, Tim is the Queensland Director. Uh, he's also on the board of uh, the Pro Bono Network. So um, he's got his foot in both camps and you know, brings some wonderful knowledge and perspective to both Pro Bono and to the people that he's helping. Uh, you can see a telephone number and email there. And there's also a link to uh, the AFA Pro Bono website, um, which has some information, or you can access it through the MS Queensland uh, website. So uh, that's half an hour. Um, we just wanted to give you a, um, a deeper understanding, lift the lid. Hopefully we have managed to answer some questions uh, that you had. And I would encourage you to um, go to those websites or pick up the phone uh, and speak to the, uh, to the pro bono if you do have any follow-up questions. And, uh, and I'd lastly just like to say uh, thank you to MS Queensland and the entire team there. Uh, you've been really supportive and great to work with. And, uh, and what we really hope from this is that uh, we'd encourage uh, you to um, have an initial conversation with one of the pro bono advisors uh, because they can make an enormous difference in your life. So thank you all very much for joining us. Tim, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And uh, look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Thanks for joining us.